I'm Marlise. And I'm Elise. And we're the, the Poldark, Poldark Dish. Dish. I can't believe we're back to Dish on Poldark Season 3. Episode 1! Woo! But first, a little recap. <laughs> Glowing Elizabeth is eight or nine months pregnant. But who's counting? Demelza. Demelza. Out of the way! Run away, horse lady with a baby! Oh, no, she's gonna ride right over the Cornwall cliffs! Yeah. Is she trying to hurt this baby? Or does she just need an excuse for why that baby's gonna come early? Ooh, snap! Keep your legs crossed, girl. Mm -hmm. Ross comes to the rescue! Woohoo! Here he comes to save the day! Mighty Ross is on his way! Ole! Demelza's showing Ross her double D's. Yeah. Those are new. But Ross is keeping his mind off things by thatching the roof. He can thatch my roof anytime. If you know what I mean. Wormleggen is concerned that Elizabeth is putting herself at risk. And now another episode of As the Worm Turns. Elizabeth, George, I worry that you're taking too many unnecessary risks in your condition. Why? Whatever do you mean? Well, for one thing, there's the horseback riding. The doctor said the air was good for me. And what about that 5K run that you're planning? The doctor wants me to keep fit. What about the bungee jumping? I hear it's good for the baby. And snowboarding the half pipe? What's your point? Trapeze lessons? Will George ever get Elizabeth to slow down? Tune in next time to As the Worm Turns. Wormy wants Jeffrey Charles to change his name to Warlegged, but Master G goes all gangsta on his ass. My name is Master G. Yeah, you know me, Master CGP. War Van Aggie. Van Drop. Poor Ray Pinvenon is at death's door. Sweet Caroline is at his bedside. He wants her to marry Lord What's His Name, but she has other plans. A big surprise is brewing at Numpara. Whatever can it be? Whatever it is, Ross runs to tell sweet Caroline. Could it be the return of Dr. Eye Candy? Ooh, yum yum, give me some. A jugless prudy looks like she's just been on a spa break. Ooh, looking ten years younger. But she's just been a Tony and Guy. Yeah, she's washed that man right out of her hair. <laughs> Demelza's brother, Drake, arrives. Her preaching pop is at death's door. And wants her to come home. Dad is going, ba ba ba. Conniving Uncle Wormleggen wants George to send Master G away to boarding school. He thinks he's a little sissy bitch. Hey. But Master G has had a massive ass growth spurt in eight months. That kid has aged in dog years. Aunt Agatha predicts doom with the new baby's arrival. Impending arrival brings fresh travail. He's coming sooner than you think. Quick, Elizabeth, grab your skis. Keep those legs crossed, girl. Ross is talking with Pasco. His life be jamming. What could possibly go wrong? There's a new girl in town. It's Morwenna, Elizabeth's cousin. Wormy gives her a position as governess to Master George. Elizabeth says, hail to the no. Wormy says, cut the umbilical cord already. Plus, in a month, or earlier, you're going to have a bouncy new worm baby. Hmm. Master G goes to visit Uncle Ross. He wants to learn the family business. So Ross takes him down the mine to show him the ropes. Ooh. Oh, with his shirt on. Wasted mining scene. <sighs> Wormy's not happy. Neither are we. Elizabeth's having labor pains! And little Poldark is busting the mood down in her bed. Guilt-ridden Demelza decides to run to her father's deathbed. But she has to get back in time. Time for what? Die, 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 die. Caroline leaves Uncle Ray's bedside. She tells him she's going to London. She leaves Horace behind. She goes off pugless. Demelza die, arrives at her father's bedside. Die. He says, Hallelujah, die, child! Die, Turn die, to the light, you sin and ho! I should have just stayed home. Demelza's finally leaving her father's bedside because she's late. Late for what? Late, late for, for Dr. Eye Candy's return. return. Woo! And a secret wedding to sweet Caroline. Because they're going to the chapel and they're gonna get married. Going to the chapel of love. wedding banquet with perfect puddings by Prudy. It's time for the wedding night. Ooh. Is Caroline nervous? She would be if, if it were, were their first time. time. Oh, that's why girlfriend didn't wear white. Mama. Elizabeth fakes the fall down the stairs and breaks the face. Mama always said, don't play ball in the house. That's the way we became the wormy bunch. The whole worm like house is in Muppet panic. Ah! And the only doctor that's available is Dr. Eye Candy. Dream gynecologist. Get the stirrups. Oh. Dr. 
doctor, he says, prepare yourself, mama, that baby is coming tonight. But Wormy's confused. Do the math. He don't know nothing about birth and no babies. Mm, 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 mm. Ross starts pacing and drinking like an expectant father. He still thinks Elizabeth's fall is an accident. Demel's is all, wake up and smell the coffee. Dr. Choke ain't coming, he just ain't coming. And Ray Penvenon has taken a turn for the worse. Dr. I can't, he has to get word to Caroline. And Caroline has to get back to see her Uncle Ray. But Ross is worried that Elizabeth's dying. But Demel's says, forget that shady bitch and take Caroline to kill a Warren. No! The eerie black moon hovers over Cornwall. Elizabeth is arching her back and moaning in that bed. Yeah, but it ain't like last time. Push! Ah! Push with everything you got, woman! Push! Push, sweetie, tickety boo! Tickety what? I'm Dr. Eye Candy, and I say, it's coming! <laughs> I don't think you want to. Oh, please, give me my son. Elizabeth tells Wormy the baby looks like him. What? She has to fake a lot of things with him. Aunt Aggie thinks the eight-month brat should have an old family name. Like Francis or Ross. Yeah, Ross. Yeah, that's the ticket. No, the boy's name is Valentine. Valentine Wormleggin. He's gonna get his ass so kicked in oh, school. Yeah. Ross lurks in the shadows outside Trenwick. He sees Wormleggin rearranging the furniture. With Aunt Agatha in it! Your son was born under a black moon! You know what that means! George will be cross. I think the resemblance is frightening. Yup, the baby looks like Ross. Let's tell George tonight. But he just might take my life. There's a bad moon on the rise. Caroline arrives just in time to tell Uncle Ray she's married and happy. And she's right. It kills him. Ross goes for a run on the Cornwall Beach. <gasps> oh, with his shirt on. Son of a bitch. Oh, pay him more money already. Do you think we were watching this for the story? A sexually frustrated Dr. Eye Candy leaves for Falmouth. Ross comes home late or early. He's been out all night and Double D's ain't happy. Morwenna and the Benjamin Button of Cornwall hold hands and walk along the coast. They come upon Demelza's brothers on their way to Nampara. Sparks fly between Morwenna and Drake. I ship them. Hashtag more Drake. Ross pays a visit to Wormy to make a deal with the devil. Baby daddy tells him I'll stay out of your life if he's cool with Jeffrey Charles and Aunt Aggie. If not, you're gonna get an ass whooping. Ross tells Demelza that he's done with everything Trent with. And Demelza tells Ross, hope you like my brothers, cause they're moving in. George tells Elizabeth that they're finally rid of Ross once and for all. And Demelza tells Ross, she's got another Cornish pasty in the oven. Oh, that is some mighty fertile sperm you got there, Ross. Ooh, you got some swimmers. Whatever life sends them, they can face it. And so can the, the Cornwall, Cornwall Cougars. Cougars. Rawr! What a great episode. Action packed. So excited to be back. But before we chat about it, here's a word from our sponsor. This episode of Pole Dark Dish is brought to you by Rose Tree Cottage. Voted the number one afternoon tea in Los Angeles, Rose Tree Cottage opens seven days a week. Tell Edmund and Mary the Pole Dark Dish girl sent you. Thank you, Rose Tree Cottage. Thank you so much, Rose Tree Cottage. We love you. Thank you so much for sponsoring the Pole Dark Dish. Well, amazing episode. Action packed start to finish something going on yes i love that you didn't have to wait five five episodes to get your answers to your burning questions but now there are more questions there are okay so she's pregnant again yeah and he says oh the timing could be better that's really cavalier <laughs> you know what i love is that he's like, he seems to just be in denial over this yeah. you know you know and she just looks like a woman who doesn't forget and she's yes yeah, oh, she is a woman scorn oh she yeah. will not let it free. she knows exactly when that baby's coming oh, but, i mean that date <laughs> must be burned it, into your thatching the roof head that of the night he went and she had to clock him. I know, so. and he, he keeps staying out all night, Ross. Never learn. What is the deal? And obviously the night the baby is born, he is just pacing the floor. Well, let's talk about that night. Um, the baby's born, 
uh, Demelza's father dies. Yes. Uh, Ray Penvenin Eerie dies. Eerie night. And it looks like a Doctor Who set because it looks all science yes, fiction. Yes, it's and, like death has come yeah, over Cornwall. Yeah, we're praying for deliverance. And when Demelza's father, when I saw his knuckles all tattooed, I thought of Night of the Hunter with Robert Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> it was. But so, yeah, Demelza's got these new brothers who are going to be in the story. I know. You know what? He looks a little Jonas Brothers like to me. A Drake. Drake. Yeah. Yes. The other very one, cute. He's a little creepy. Some little uh, new eye candy for the youngsters. Yeah, and Morwenna is adorable. She's beautiful. I think yeah. I think I'm gonna enjoy seeing that little courtship happen. But of course, we've seen in the scenes coming up this season where, of course, Ross is going to tell uh, tell the brother, "You may not have anything to do with anybody at Trendwith." Of course, so because we've gotta have Ross likes to tell people what to do, but he doesn't really like to do those <laughs> I things. Know, himself. Ross, Zip well, we up. still love him. We do. Okay, Jeffrey Charles. Suddenly he's 23. Jeffrey Charles? Did the other actor went off to do Billy Elliot? Or maybe it was this one. I don't know. I don't know. Jeffrey Charles, aged five years and eight months. That's yeah. amazing. And I mean, he's a wonderful little actor, but I miss the other guy who was like there playing with the soldiers. I know. And now he's like mature and I sassy love him, and though. educated. He's yeah. sassy and he's talking back. I mean, yeah. I like him because he is not going to back down from warm legging. I just no. love, I love yeah, that dynamic. There's going to be tension coming. There is. Yeah, we can Good. Tell. He's the little man of the house. And yeah. you just see Aunt Agatha back there rooting yeah. for him. Poor you know? Agatha. I know. She she got the crazy lines this episode, but I mean, such a fun character and such a lovely actress. Yes, she is wonderful. And speaking of lovely actress, so we had Ray uh, Penvenin's death, and what a beautiful scene for Caroline. Oh, I was Gabriella weepy. Wilde really did such a beautiful job, just really heartfelt, yeah. and just a heartbreaking moment when she loses him. And I'm sorry to lose Ray Penvenin because I really came to like him, and I like the actor anyway. I like John Nettles. He's yes. always fun to watch. Yes, we do love but him. But I, I felt bad that we're not going to see him anymore. And I know life goes on and characters change, but you know, I get know. attached. But who we are going to see is Dr. Eye Candy. What did you think of the wedding? They were smiling so genuinely oh, in that I scene. I think everybody's just happy to happy. do that scene. They were so beautiful. I have never seen a more beautiful couple. First of all, they, he looks a little uh, Matthew Crawley to me. He really he, does. He, he totally me does. But Matthew I, Crawley. You know, we did go to visit the set. Yes. We did get to meet Gabriella Wilde. She yes. was kind enough to grant us an And interview. he was there too. But she and he has looks to be delicious. But she has person, to be too. one of the most beautiful humans I've ever she seen really in my life. Is in real the life. most beautiful and elegant. Not yeah. just because she was corseted up in costume, but you'll see the interview coming up with Gabriella Wilde. She is just so poised and beautiful. She's lovely. And yeah. graceful and well spoken. We just she was just so sweet. Excellent casting. Yes, excellent. Yeah. Perfect casting. Prudy, our favorite, oh, really beady comes me. into her own. She is Making puddings and looking uh, fabulous, pretty, and her hair is fluffy. Can, and you're looking a little hot, Mama. Oh, I'm yeah, telling she you, Edmie Edmi came back to this show looking really good. Yeah, all relaxed, looking like you had a massage. <laughs> what was going on with that Judd actor? That they're so happy to be done with him. <laughs> no, well, I mean, the character was a pain in the butt, you know. But she, but is, she's doing good. Yeah, she's missed her wedded bliss like a ruptured <laughs> spleen. <laughs> she's so got her skillage her. back yeah. at the kitchen. Yeah, apparently. Skillage. So we love Beady Edney. We can't wait to see more of her yes. this season. This is going to be a fun season. It's going to be a great season. So much coming up. What do you think? Now, let's. what do you think is going to happen if George finds out that that baby's not his? You know, they showed the baby with the little black hair anyway, but they're like, oh, it looks like you, George. And he's, oh, oh yeah, I'm falling for that. This baby? Th this baby. He's falling for that. So something's got to give. I know. Well, once he see once he sees the scar on the, <laughs> on the baby's left eye, I don't think he's going to be very happy. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so we still have a lot of stories to bring you from our journey to Poldark, our visit to the Poldark set last December. They spoiled us, and now we're getting ready for this. Going, they it's not really the same. They really did, and we can't <laughs> wait to tell you all the stories. I mean, from the point that we were driven to this, the studio, found out that we had our own dressing rooms, yeah. and all the beautiful costumes that we got to wear, and everyone's fussing over our hair, and, and just and getting to be in a scene with the actors. We're not going to tell you what scene we're in, yeah, but we getting are. to work with your favorite <laughs> actors uh, on this show was just an amazing experience. We'd like to thank all of our Journey to Poldark supporters. If you watch all our bonus footage at the end, we thank all of you because without your support, we could not have made the trip to Bristol to visit the set of Poldark. From our hearts, thank you. From our hearts, thank you so much. And with that, I think we're done. We're going to say goodbye for now. We can't wait to see where the season brings us. Thank you once again for watching. I'm Marlies. And I'm Elise. And we're the, the Poldark, Poldark Dish. Dish. Rawr.